Among Us has taken over the world in 2020, but there was actually a time when the small indie studio Inner Sloth was thinking about giving up on the game entirely. The online social deduction game was far from an instant hit when it came out in 2018, and the team has had their fair share of failed projects in the past. Therefore, moving on to the next idea was nothing new for the members of Inner Sloth. Marcus Bromander, the designer slash artist, and artist Amy Liu met each other in middle school. Forrest Willard, the team's programmer, came into the picture when he met Marcus and Amy in college. After they graduated, Forrest started working full-time for Microsoft, while Marcus became a full-time indie developer. One day, the two friends started chatting about developing games and how fun it is. However, Marcus said he couldn't code, and only knew how to draw. Forrest responded he only knew how to code. So, they decided to team up and combine their skills. Their first project was something Marcus had already started working on before teaming up with Forrest, and he described it as a top-down ghost shooter that he made in Stencil, a tool to make games quick and easy. The duo jumped into the idea without any planning whatsoever, and after a year of development, they realized it wasn't really interesting, going as far as describing the project as nuclear throne but not good. Next, they decided to do something that could be developed in a smaller time frame. After three months of development, they released a mobile game called Dig to China in January 2015. Having developed and successfully released their first game, the two creators felt ready to tackle a bigger and more ambitious project, yet still small enough so they could develop it in about six months' time. Marcus had the idea for a local multiplayer twin-stick deathmatch game, where players would gain favor with procedural gods each round or be punished by them. It sounded interesting enough to start with, so production began in December 2015. This project was also the first time they brought in Amy to help with the artwork. Once they had developed something that was playable, the trio submitted the project titled Deatite to the Steam Greenlight service. To their surprise, Deatite was greenlit by Steam in June 2016, but some players had some harsh criticisms. Greenlight was a wake-up call. Players were quick to point out flaws that we should have polished up front. We learned that for a Steam release, showing something that looks any amount in progress is a mistake. This was also our first trailer, first real marketing experience and first Unity game. So, a lot of learning happened after the execution started. We honestly didn't think we'd get through green light, but randomly after about a month, we were approved. During this time, Forrest was still working full-time for Microsoft as a computer engineer, and on top of that, Marcus and Forrest lived a four-hour drive away from each other. This made development tricky and unable to move along at a fast pace. By November 2016, development had become so slow that Marcus decided to start remastering one of his other projects called the Henry Stickman series. Despite all of that, they both still wanted to pursue a career in game development, so the duo made efforts to make that dream easier. Marcus decided to move closer to Forrest, who made plans of his own to leave Microsoft. While all this was happening, Deity disappeared for about a month, followed by the announcement of its hiatus in December 2016. When their plans to go full-time together eventually lined up in October 2017, they still hadn't given up on their old project, and decided to give Deity a fair shot this time around. Unfortunately, after spending a week rebuilding old assets and iterating on the concept, it became clear that the game just wasn't that interesting. While it may seem like they wasted months of their lives, Forrest described it as a valuable experience. In retrospect, spending a year iterating a single design produced a lot of good things, and we are now much better at finding fun, but also, I have a lot of excitement to return with such a fixed destination. It should be much easier to return to that point without also building on a year of mistakes. We learned when an idea just isn't working out as planned, you need to drop the idea or drop the plan. Don't spend a year mashing them together. It's much easier said than done. While Deity it may have been a failed project, it did help convince the team to develop Among Us instead. The alternative to repairing Deity it was Among Us, and developing that was exciting and felt right from the get-go. The developers were inspired by the social deduction game called Mafia, also known as Werewolves. In Mafia, players have to figure out each other's identities in order to eliminate suspects that are trying to win the game by casting doubt on the other players. The indie studio wanted to bring this style of gameplay to a mobile party game setting. 
Remnants of this inspiration can be seen in the very first prototype of Among Us on Google Play, which had the working title of Space Mafia and the source files, and can still be seen today in the URL of the Google Play page. Later on in development, the team sat down to brainstorm for a real title, something that would reflect that there's a betrayer in the party, and Among Us seemed like the perfect fit. The team decided to develop Among Us on the Unity engine, since they now had more experience with the platform thanks to the Deity project. All the artwork and animations were done with Adobe Animate, formerly known as Flash. Marcus said that he wrote the main menu song when he felt really depressed. At the time, Marcus had trouble writing music in general, so he decided to just bang something out, which became the main song for Among Us. To help design the very first map of Among Us, the Skelt map, Marcus used Google Images and typed in keywords like Reactor Room to come up with ideas for little details to add to the map. The developers mentioned in interviews that playtesting was difficult, since you need quite a few people in the same lobby to properly test the game. Therefore, they had to schedule playtests weeks in advance to get all their friends together on the same day. Unfortunately, in the beginning, the early versions of Among Us would immediately break once their friends joined the lobby. Forrest needed to scramble to send them new builds through Google Play, and called the whole experience painful and frustrating. Interestingly enough, the creators always tested the game with 7 to 8 people, and had never tested it with 9 to 10 people before release. Inner Sloth launched an open beta on mobile in June 2018, which was quite different from the version we know and play today. Back then, Among Us only supported local multiplayer, so the whole game was played through text chat only. To prevent players from trying to listen to what the other players were doing during a match, the team didn't implement any sound effects whatsoever. Furthermore, the only available map at that time was the Skeld map. Forrest admitted that the mobile version didn't do great at release, but thanks to the feedback from a vocal minority, Inner Sloth decided to implement online multiplayer. In August 2018, the studio launched an online multiplayer beta version of the game on Itch.io, in preparation for the Steam release. Now that Among Us supported online matches, the developers realized they had to implement sound effects to make the game more engaging to play without other people in the same room. Marcus had never really done sound design before, so he did what he could by mixing sound effects from sound packs that he had accumulated over the years. Among Us was finally released on Steam on November 16th, 2018, and the team now considered the game to be out of beta. The Steam release brought in more online players, putting the servers to the test. At the start of development, the team used a free Amazon server, and Forrest described it as the worst servers you can get. The only reason they went for it was to keep production as cheap as possible. The multiplayer game saw its first big spike in players by the end of 2018, which brought in thousands of players and kept lobbies alive 24-7. Our first audience was Korea, and they still constitute 50% of our Steam Among Us sales. That all started in December 2018, with Kevin Choi. He found Among Us via Itch.io, and I think that's because we got a day of promotion on the front page. This is literally the only promotion we have expressly asked for. The free Amazon server wasn't able to handle the new wave of players, so five days before Christmas, Forrest had to start working 14 hours a day to fix the server issues. He felt pressure to do so, because he and the rest of the team didn't want to lose the momentum the game was building. Forrest further added that every time a new wave of players came in, the servers would burn to the ground and he would have to build them back up again. The developers listened closely to fans and kept tweaking and updating the game to make the experience smoother and more enjoyable, but unfortunately Among Us was barely turning a profit. The indie studio was ready to give up on their party game and move on to something new. We stuck with Among Us a lot longer than we probably should have from a pure business standpoint. We tried to quit and should have quit several times. I mean, the original vision was local multiplayer only. We put online out and it was received better, but you know, nothing too special. And we put it out and said, alright, we're done. We were going to move on to the next game. During these challenging times, the members of Inner Sloth luckily had enough savings to keep the development going for as long as they wanted. Forrest even said that he intentionally saved up money during his time at Microsoft, so that he wouldn't have to throw in the towel if Among Us wasn't immediately among Steam's top sellers. Suddenly, however, in early 2019, a big YouTuber started streaming the game and creating YouTube videos. 
Jotnot, who found our game on Google Play earlier in 2019, probably recommended by players, possibly via itch.io even. I know he streamed from mobile before switching to PC. We had considered wrapping up Among Us back then, because profitability was not in sight. But the Brazilian audience drove us to create more content, and that was wise. By May 2019, Among Us hit 1 million downloads, which was a huge deal for the small developer. The success, along with the vocal fans, motivated Innerslaw to add more content such as new maps, tasks, and skins. Speaking of maps, the indie studio released the second map, Mira HQ, on August 8, 2019. Lots of fans requested a Moon or Mars map, but the developers didn't like those obvious choices. Instead, they wanted to create internal lore and answer questions like why are there crewmates and what are they doing? Inner Sloth isn't a fan of obvious concrete lore, so they rather incorporate subtle lore into the maps. Therefore, Mira HQ is designed like an excavation slash surveying company located in the sky. Amy said that one of the inspirations for the map was Cloud City from Star Wars, since they wanted Mira HQ to resemble a skyscraper in a vast area. While creating the map, Amy would type lots of keywords into Google Images for inspiration and to draw references. She further added that the second map was almost an underwater map and that they'd like to do something like that in the future. The third map, called Polis, was released on November 12th, 2019, and this time around the developers gave in to the fans' requests and created a planet map. However, they wanted to make the map their own and not simply create something that resembles a moon or an existing planet. Furthermore, the third map was made to be more open compared to the previous two in order to create more variety in matches. For some reason, fans wanted to be able to play on a red planet, but that felt too easy and obvious to the team. So instead, Marcus settled on a purple colored planet. Initially, both maps were priced at $4 each, but they were permanently reduced to $2 on January 6th, 2020, and eventually made free on June 11th, 2020. It's still possible to purchase the map packs, but they now only provide the skins that were bundled with the maps. 2019 certainly wasn't a bad year for Inner Sloth. Reaching over 1 million downloads and releasing two new maps were exciting milestones for the team. But little did they know that soon their small indie title would become one of the biggest games on the planet in 2020. Funnily enough, at the start of 2020, the studio announced that development on Among Us would not continue any longer. Among Us has had a very good run. We thought it was a completed game twice in the past, as we came back to add online multiplayer and two new maps. But as of the Polis release, we're sure that Among Us is a complete game. There are always things that people want and things we could potentially add, but Among Us was always intended to be a small game, and we are just a team of three people with one programmer. So from now on, we are not adding more to Among Us. There will be a few bug fix only updates and a plan of price changes, then we will let Among Us take its natural course. The announcement caused a considerable drop off of players, as expected. However, not long after, things started taking a turn once again, when a UK streamer called Kev and his friends started streaming Among Us. Forrest explained that Kev basically completely reversed the drop off in players and brought in a new wave of European players, particularly on Steam, which was their number two marketplace at that time. Forrest speculates that Steam had noticed their newfound success, because in February 2020, Steam reached out to the team for a daily deal on the store page, and Inner Sloth agreed to 50% off the base price. Each of the two days during the daily deal period produced an entire month of sales and left the studio with a higher baseline of sales after, as well as a boatload of wishlists. These positive numbers prompted the developers to do a Steam summer sale as well later that year, and it was around this time that Among Us started to go viral. The summer sale snowballed the game into minor top seller visibility, and Forrest believes this is why the streamer Soda Poppins started playing the game in the middle of July 2020 and broadcast it to millions of people. I learned that he was told by Pluto, who works on the partnerships team at Twitch, and I have this like genealogy worked out in my mind. I think Pluto learned about it from the Steam sale, and the Steam sale happened because of a daily deal, and there's this whole chain of events. So then Soda Poppin pulled in XQC and Andy Milonakis and a bunch of other guys and they just played it. 
The following months, Among Us grew into a worldwide internet phenomenon. By the end of September 2020, the game exceeded 100 million downloads on Google Play. To put that into perspective, on September 3rd, the game only had over 10 million downloads. That same month, YouTube reported that videos about Among Us were viewed 4 billion times. On top of that, Among Us hit 1.5 million concurrent players across all platforms. On September 5th, according to Inner Sloth. On September 29th, the concurrent player count peaked even further to as much as 3.8 million people. Among Us's growing popularity spawned a lot of internet memes and fan art, further demonstrating the game's impact on the world. Marcus was thrilled to see his creations flourish on the internet. We're getting sent really cool animations and stuff too. That's, I think, my favorite thing to see. Other people draw the characters that I created in their different styles. Even though they're so simple, they can still look different. I think that's awesome. The indie studio saw the big surge in sales and players as the opportune time to start developing Among Us 2, since they had been kicking around the idea of a sequel for a while by then. The announcement was made on August 18th, 2020, in one of the team's blog posts, explaining that Among Us was never created to be able to handle the huge numbers of concurrent players. They further said that this made adding more content, without breaking the game, very difficult. Core sections of the game would need to be recreated in order to fix those problems, which would be more difficult than building a sequel from scratch, according to the developers. However, the studio quickly went back on their words and cancelled Among Us 2 on September 23rd, 2020. Their main reason for continuing to support the original Among Us is to get additional content to people faster. The developers don't want to make people wait several months, or perhaps years, for a sequel when the original game is still this popular. Inner Sloth's current plan is to expand Among Us step by step with all the ideas they had for the sequel. They explained in a blog post that this is probably the more difficult choice, because it means going deep into the core code of the game and reworking several parts of it. Unsurprisingly, the team is extremely busy now that their small indie game is being played by millions of people around the world, and they said it's making it difficult to add more content as a result. To help solve that problem, they're currently looking to hire more people, but that's not an easy process, according to the creators. They want to do their due diligence and hire the right people for the right job, since Among Us is special to them and they don't want to mess it up. Despite that, as of November 9th, 2020, Inner Sloth hired Victoria Tran as their official community director, a job that previously mostly fell on Amy's shoulders. The indie studio is aware that many people are experiencing server issues, as well as hackers that are ruining the fun for other players, and a developer said they're working hard to fix those issues among other things. The maximum concurrent player base has already been increased by adding additional servers and regions. Additionally, in October 2020, colorblind support for the wires task was added to the Steam beta, along with lobby customization options. Future plans include adding accounts to help eliminate hacking, improving gameplay for ghosts, adding customizable controls, a friend system, more player colors, more supported translations, increasing player count to support matches with 12 to maybe 15 people, and adding more medium and bigger sized maps. One of those maps has already been announced and will be a Henry Stickman themed location. Lastly, the developers are also looking into porting the game to consoles, but this has proven pretty difficult to achieve in the game's current state. Inner Sloth explained that in order to achieve the same experience on consoles, they would have to write a system for quick comms for randoms like Rocket League. They're not sure yet if they would be able to implement console voice chat or not. Looking back on Among Us's entire development so far, the team is very proud with where they are today, stating that they prefer snowballing their way to the top instead of trying to create the perfect product from the get-go. I personally like it, because I hate all the fake manufactured stuff where you go through the motions. You do what everyone else does, and you win or you lose, and that's the guaranteed strategy. It's nice to see that it worked out for us, just going our own way and doing our own thing. Whether Among Us can maintain its success remains to be seen, but as far as the developers are concerned, they've already succeeded as a team, and are looking forward to whatever comes their way in the future. We've worked through a lot of things with each other, and made something we're really proud of. 
So now that we're in the spotlight, we have a lot of trust in each other as we're growing super quickly and tackling all new problems. And this success opens up a lot of doors for us, which we're excited to explore. Thank you.